So long as human beings are involved in the accounting process, mistakes are inevitable. These mistakes are often made in journal entries. Perhaps a number was written down wrong, or a transaction was recorded in the wrong account. Sometimes these mistakes are caught early enough that they can simply be erased and rewritten. However, once the journal entry is posted to the general ledger, it becomes permanent, and the only way to fix it is to create a correcting entry. A correcting entry is a new journal entry created specifically to correct a mistake from a previous journal entry. Because these journal entries are simply correcting a previous mistake, there are no source documents for them. This means that a memorandum is used as the source document for correcting entries. Correcting journal entries can seem confusing at first, but it helps if you can visualize the original transaction and the correcting transaction together. That's why t-accounts are often the best way to analyze correcting entries. Let's look at an example of how we can use t-accounts to analyze a correcting entry. Let's imagine that a piece of equipment purchased in cash for $2,000 on September 1st was posted to supplies instead of equipment. Now using these T accounts, let's take a look at what should have happened and then what actually happened. So we know that a piece of equipment was purchased in cash, so that would have reduced cash, so that's a credit to cash, and then it would be a debit to equipment. But according to our notes, we made a mistake, and instead of debiting our equipment, we actually debited supplies. So now our correcting entry needs to fix that so that the equipment has the debit. So this is an example of our original transaction, credit to cash, debit to supplies. Let's look at what our correcting entry would look like. First of all, we know that we need to debit equipment because that's what should have happened in the first place. But where does the credit go? We don't want to credit cash because we've already credited that once before. And if we were to credit it again, we would be taking out of cash two times. And that's not what really happened. So instead, we're going to be putting the credit to supplies. And that makes sense, because if you total each of these T-accounts, the net change to cash would be a credit of $2,000. The net change to supplies would be a zero, because you have a debit and a credit. They subtract each other because they're on opposite sides, leaving you with a zero net difference and then the equipment would have a net difference of a debit of $2,000. So if you look at the totals between these two transactions, we have a credit to cash and a debit to equipment, exactly what should have happened in the first place. Now that we've had a chance to analyze this correction, let's move over to the general journal and look at how these two transactions would be entered there. First of all, let's start by entering in the original transaction on 9-1. So on September 1st, we originally debited supplies and credited cash for $2,000. We later realized that was a mistake, so we made a correcting entry. Let's imagine that that happened at the end of the month on 9.30. For our correcting entry, we debited equipment and credited supplies. So as you're looking at correcting entries, it can be easy to get confused about what that correcting entry is supposed to look like. The easiest way for me to do a correcting entry is to come back to T accounts. Look in the T account at what should have happened, then analyze the original transaction in the T account, and it becomes easy to see where the debits and credits need to be so that the end result at the bottom, when the two transactions are totaled, equals exactly what the transaction should have been in the first place. To learn more about correcting entries and other accounting topics, check out more of my videos on YouTube or visit torynorman.com.